We are here tonight to celebrate, to award the best in your field, and it will be a pleasure to do that. Uh, and it's particularly pleasing to see so many women in the room. Um, because normally, when it comes to women in building and in construction, in architecture, it feels a bit like the Brexit debate. <laughs> uh, we know they're out there, but we don't see or hear enough from, from them, from you. And it was that lack of representation that prompted the Women's Equality Party into existence just over a year ago. I joined the Women's Equality Party from the moment it was first mooted, when it exploded into life in the run-up to the general election as thousands of women and many men, contrary to perception, came together in frustration at the lack of practical policies offered by any of the other parties to bridge the equality gap. We were tired of seeing our lives and our needs relegated to the back of every political manifesto as if we were a special interest group. We were at the back with the pigeon fanciers instead of half the population. And we wanted to put women's equality into the heart of politics. We set out to do that by persuading all of the other political parties that this is an issue that can no longer be ignored as not relevant or too difficult. The way to put women's equality back onto the political agenda is to make all of the other parties question their assumption that our vote is theirs by right. To question their assumption that we will continue to wait. To question their assumption that there are more important things. That we have, as I'm told quite often via social media, enough equality. I have no idea what that looks like. That we're almost there. That real equality is an unrealistic aim and has no place in a political manifesto. The Women's Equality Party has set herself the task of a wholesale restructuring. Because equality for women is not about tweaking a legislative clause here or setting a target there. It requires ambition and imagination and collaboration. We set ourselves six core objectives. Equal education, equal parenting, equal representation in politics and in business, equal pay, equal representation in the media, and an end to violence against women. That epidemic. I wish we could have a minute's silence, as so many have respected for Joe tonight, every time a woman in this country is murdered. We set ourselves the task of doing politics on a different scale, a bigger scale, a more imaginative scale, a woman-shaped scale. We're talking about building, we're talking about architecture. Le Corbusier, this is where I'm glad I didn't have any of this fizz before I came in. Le Corbusier believed that everyone should work to human scale, right? And I think this is essential to understanding the experiences of women and their relationship to the built environment, as well as some of the work that is so important that all of you do. Because when Le Corbusier translated his idea of scale to practical impact, when he thought about providing structures for the family, for the community, he translated scale into a six-foot man. Women's experiences in this industry and in the communication about building, about construction, about architecture, really matter. Our relationships to ourselves as architects, as engineers, as planners, as urbanists, as communicators, are tied up in our experience as a minority. And there is an opportunity in this. It can sharpen awareness of what it's like for other excluded groups. But in order to bring that experience to scale, there is a need for women's collective experiences and interests to be represented. As individuals, women's, women can raise consciousness about practical gender needs. We can talk about the experience of being smaller, some of us, uh, pregnant, feeling unsafe after dark. We might even talk about the need to make a few more toilets available. And as individuals writing about, working within, communicating about this industry, you can all raise the importance of this other experience and its absence when you see it. 
As a group, you can raise the importance of a gendered approach to planning. You can think about and reimagine what home, neighbourhood, city, workplace mean, and you can imagine an environment that responds to those needs. We made equality in the media one of our six core objectives because achieving real equality for women requires cultural change. The media is at the heart of our culture. It has a profound effect on the way men and women perceive themselves and perceive the world around them. I do not need to tell you that. The power of the media has an impact on all of our other core objectives, like, for example, the representation of women and women's lives. And that goes for business too. That goes for the decisions we make about which issues we decide are important to our society and to our economy. And I saw this play out in my campaign for Mayor of London. Equality for London's four million women was dismissed by some observers as niche. The really big issue was housing, right? And the way the other mayoral candidates decided to tackle this was to go to war about how many thousands more homes they would each build if they were elected. It became about numbers. It was really alarming to see each candidate make such a big issue so small. I wanted something ambitious, I wanted something imaginative. My manifesto called for homes, not houses, for a rethink of space standards, an investigation into what affordable housing means for women when you've got a 23% pay gap in this city. I wanted an inclusive design process for women's safety to be mainstreamed into the design of transport. I wanted a cross-party committee on planning and on development because the scale of the crisis we are facing demands the vision and scale of our collective ambition. And that is why we created the Women's Equality Party, because women's equality has been annexed from notions of political and economic power and abstracted from the structural context that drives those inequalities. In the first place, we've been reduced to the sum of our individual experiences. And the EU referendum is a perfect example we're going to vote in a week. Who here feels as though they will be voting with the full understanding of what that means? I think that's very interesting. And I think also what's particularly interesting is that this wearying response, and I know that in this election it's felt by men and women, but particularly for women, it's very, very familiar. Because it's at this point, every election, when women's unwillingness to confirm to that YouGov operator on the other side of the phone how they're going to vote on a national conversation that has largely excluded them that finally sets alarm bells ringing. Concerns about whether the women might just swing it. Have you read any of that lately? You will. It propels politician media into a state of panic. Our office phone is ringing off the hook. Look at the numbers of women that are going to be, that have been and will continue now in the last week to be ushered into the debate. Any minute now, there'll be a pink bus. And those statements to women, they're designed to appeal to women. At that point, politicians begin to speak to the special interest group again. Not to human beings, not to the other half of the population, to, to this weird special interest group who only ever vote on matters of safety or health care. They switch out the regular narrative in which everyone is promised the freedom of individual economic empowerment for groupthink. They've broken down the group. They've broken down the representation of women in an, in an effort to appeal to the masses. So there's no longer a collective democratic feminism with which to engage, and we are changing that. In the London mayoral election, our very first election campaign, 10 months after we opened our doors for membership, we won a quarter of a million votes. One in 20 people who voted for the London mayor voted for me. We have seen a huge, huge response to what we're doing, and we've seen the other political parties respond to it too, because it's time. And it's time for all of you too, because too often the world of media and communication fails to point out the lack of women's inclusion across many, 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 many industries. You have the opportunity to change that too. We are here tonight to celebrate excellence in your field, and yes, we will be getting to that soon. I have noticed the lack of chairs in this room. We will hurry it along. 
Being best at what all of you do here means celebrating diversity and equality in all that you do. If you work together, if we work together, there is every chance that we can conceive, construct, create a new built environment in the image of equality. Thank you.